Hello everybody, Jonathan Reeves here with another Vectorworks video and today we're going to create some really complex forms just by using some straightforward 3D modelling tools, things like the Vectorworks NURBS tools. We'll take a look at things like Shell Solid and the camera tool and a little bit of animation. But if you just want to have a go at creating something a bit fun and interesting like this, then I hope you enjoy the video. Thanks for watching. Okay, so let's get started with this next tutorial. We're just gonna pop it into the front view and you can see that I've got the grid turned on. This is gonna be quite helpful. Gonna click the space bar just to tap up the pop on demand smart options display. And we're just gonna tap in a few numbers here to give ourselves a bit of a guide. I think we'll do five meters by say four meters, create a rectangle. And then let's just snap that back to the center. Now this in 3D, as you can see, is really just a guide for us to draw. Um, and this is sometimes quite a helpful thing to remember to put some sort of construction information in. Now, I've selected my NURBS curve tool and I'm drawing directly on the face. You can see the face is purple, so that means I'm able to snap to that face. And I really just wanted that rectangle to guide, so I can delete that now. Great, okay, so we've got our NURBS curve here. I'm going to hold down the Alt key to type um, and drag off a copy and just type in two meters. Then if I do Command D, Command D, it just keeps duplicating at that spacing to give me a number of little sections of curve. Okay, so what we'll do now, we'll basically go to Modify. I'm just gonna group this NURBS curve. And the reason I'm going to group it is so that I get the reshaping handles popping up so I can easily stretch the NURBS curve as sort of one entity, if you like. And that's good, so this has sort of enabled me to stretch it. Let's just align it back to that center point there. Just click G if you're struggling to get it aligned. So hopefully you can see where I'm going with this. I'm just gonna group this one as well. And once I've grouped it, then when I'm in the front view or the top view, I can actually click on the anchor points here and type in the size precisely of the profile. So quite, quite a nice little tip really to group these shapes, resize them, and then we can ungroup them again to access the nerve curves. We can also change the position of them, but you really can see I'm just able to create a range of different profiles. Excellent. So I'll select all of those and just re-ungroup them again. So all my nerve curves are just sort of profiled here in this particular environment. Let's just ungroup that last one there. Stretch it a bit more, I think. Excellent. Okay, good. Okay, so that was that section. Now what we're going to do is go for um, the lofting tool. So we'll go down to loft surfaces. We simply select each surface in order um, and then we can basically loft between them. So we can click preview. We can also retain the um, original curves if we wanted to. So that's quite a nice little feature here. And you can see we've got a really complex dynamic sort of shell type structure already. So now I'm going to go onto the shell solid tool, click onto the NURBS curve and just give it say a 300 mil thickness or offset. Um, if you watch my other videos, you've seen I'm a real big fan of the um, shelling tool. It's absolutely fantastic for creating sort of, you know, thick objects, something with a bit of mass and thickness from surfaces. Um, so what we're gonna do now is basically use the extracting tool one more time. I've just extracted a NURBS surface. And this time I can take the outer surface and give it a smaller shell and again, I can go inside or outside, but the reason I've done this is so that I can just apply some texture on. Um, and you're looking at our uh, preview of our new texture pack, actually, which is very exciting. This is gonna be coming out shortly. Um, so do take a look at the website where you can uh, get hold of this. It's a really nice texture pack with over 100 different materials in, in fact, 120. Okay, so now that we've learned the principles of this technique, let's look at another little example. We'll kind of start from scratch, I think. Um, so I'm just gonna create a new layer to do this. Just run through and make this, uh, this example a bit more advanced. So I'm gonna use the same technique and I'm going to basically use the regular polygon tool to define my, should we say, my shape that I'm going to start with. And let's just tap in some sizes there again. I'm gonna use this as a guide like we did before. Definitely a nice little tip. So let's go for the NURBS curve tool. I'm going to click on that face to make sure I'm drawing on those points. Click, click, and down again. Um, you'll notice that this pretty much looks like a, a circle in a way, but the advantage with the NURBS curve is I can essentially start to kind of manipulate these points and bend it. Um, so I can create a much more dynamic shape than I could have with my circle. Okay, so with this example, we're gonna do something a little bit more complicated. I'm just gonna uh, draw a circle six meters away 
um, and snap that to that inner point. And the reason I've done that is just to help me um, get the center of that circle so that I can select the shape. And basically I've got something to rotate and pivot around. So I'm gonna do the rotate tool and we're going to choose the rotate and duplicate mode so that as we, as we rotate round, let's tap in a nice set angle, 15 degrees each time. You'll see each time we do this, we're going to get a duplicate of the um, profile or the NURBS curve. So it's a very nice way just to kind of rotate around a central point and just create some sort of interesting forms here. So I think we'll just do one or two more. Let's just do that one one more time, 15. And I think let's have a one or two more basically so that we've got a little profile you'll see where we're going with this in a second excellent okay so we can delete that construction line so here we go um we've got these nice profiles now okay so just before we do the lofting what we'll do is we'll duplicate these and just rotate them around and uh, let's just snap those there i think there's an extra one in there so we can delete that one so you see where i'm going with this i'm going to create a really kind of interesting kind of tunnel type shape okay great so we'll go to our loft tool love the loft tool I loft these NURB profiles. Now each one of these could, could be different if I'd wanted. I could have um, changed the profile. Just to give you the idea, we'll click tick. This time I'm going to keep the curves and preview. Okay, so there's our lovely, wonderful, um, curvaceous or tunnel-like shape. Uh, using the NURBS curve, so it's a very complicated shape but made really easily. And what's really nice is we've actually got our original curves in there as well that we can use. Um, good, okay, so we're going to go ahead once again and do the shelling operation. Even on a really complicated curve, the shell is has no problems just offsetting that. Remember, it is dynamic, so you can change the number and you can shell inside or outside as well. Okay, so what we're going to do on this one, just to show you how this can work, is take a circle tool. I'm just going to duplicate that to the center of each of our profiles on NURBS curves. Um, I'm going to use my uh, selection tool. In fact, a better way to do this, probably the wand tool because I can select by object type, click on a circle and get them all selected, which is great. Okay, so then extrude them. Uh, just make sure that they go up through the NURBS curve and then we'll go to model and subtract solids just to subtract those to create some sort of interesting sort of roof light hole type things. Um, very easy. So solid subtraction combined with the shell. So what we'll do, we'll drag on a nice sort of uh, texture from the texture pack and we'll go and adapt just to show you if you do want to, you can play around with the scale and the rotation of those textures very easily. But these are really nice high quality textures. There's a big range of them. Um, as I say, do check out the website for the texture pack too, coming soon. Okay, good. So what we'll do now, I think, is do a little bit more work on um, the ribs, if you like. So I'm going to create a small circle I just pop that in, double click six. Um, you can always change it over an object info. Just amend the size there, maybe 200 mil. And I'm going to select my curve, if you like my NURBS curve and my profile. And then what we do, we simply go extrude along a path. Now this is like the follow me tool, I guess, in SketchUp, uh, but it's very robust. And this is really nice and easy to do. So you can see every time I do the extrude along a path, it takes the profile, the circle, and just really extrudes it beautifully along that path. All I'm doing here is pasting the circle back in, holding the B key down in order to be able to select the, uh, the NURBS surface or curve. And then that B key just enables me to easily select the X-ray fill selection mode. Very, very cool. Click X for selection and select both the profile and the curve. Okay, that's great. And then once again, model, extrude along a path. So you get the idea. This creates an extra sort of, you know, level of detail. Um, and it was from something that we used to construct the curves at the beginning. So they're exactly aligned with the surfaces. And it creates this nice little kind of structural rib type effect, which is quite a fun thing. As I say, I don't really know what I'm modeling here. And, you know, it's not a really real project or anything, but I'm a big fan of just playing around and experimenting with 3D modeling software. And I really recommend that you would spend a bit of time sometimes just modeling things that have nothing to do with real projects, um, but they do enable you to learn new skills and also have a bit of fun and try things out. Um, so that's pretty cool. So I'm just gonna make a new class. Let's call this uh, structure. And what we'll do is we'll just give this a little bit of texture. Let's go and find a nice sort of metallic texture or something from the texture pack. 
and we'll just let that load in for a second. Um, sometimes the more resources you have, the slower it can be to load, so just keep an eye on that. We can see there's some really gorgeous high quality materials here that we can use. Uh, I think we'll go for maybe that one, double click, click OK, and that will just apply itself to the objects that are in that class. So if we zoom in, you can see some nice textures there. Okay, so in a fairly short space of time, we've made a really quite a complicated surface um, or form, a nice little kind of design for a new tunnel or something like this. I say just a bit of fun at this stage. Now, one of the really nice things is I can edit the profile if I want to, and if I do want to adjust the size of those, just make them a little bit bigger or smaller, I can do that just by um, coming back in, and then you'll see that it's easy for me to adjust the size and exit the profile and it'll just re-extrude. So if you do want a bigger one, that's all you need to do. Uh, I kind of preferred it as it was. I love this though, the flexibility, the fact you can actually just try stuff out and you're not afraid to give it a go and just undo or go backwards. Okay, good, so we'll move forward a bit more. Um, I think what we'll do is just extract a couple of edges here. So I'm gonna go to the extract edge mode, hold shift down and extract those two bottom edges and now the, this will be good because it means that we can actually loft between them to uh, select them. Sometimes they can be a bit hard to select. Um, so if that's the case, I recommend sometimes just using um, the B key to select them. Let's group them. And grouping is a really useful thing sometimes because then you can just edit the group or double click, go into the group and basically use the um, hide other objects while in groups button so we can isolate the group. So now I can use the uh, loft surface tool, essentially just loft a bit between those two shapes to create a really quite a complex curve for the floor. Uh, let's once again give it a quick shell thickness, and this time we'll go uh, negative, so we can go down rather than up. We just reverse the direction here. Basically just click inside or outside, depending on which one you've done. So we've got a nice little floor there for our tunnel. And again, let's go and give it some nice texture, just to make it look a bit in more interesting, nice brick texture. Okay, great, this is really coming on now. Um, I'm enjoying myself, it's definitely a fun thing to do. So let's move on to adding in a camera and check out the perspective inside this. So the render its camera is a really nice sort of simple tool. We could just place it into the model and double click it. And then we can use the translate tools or the walkthrough tools just to kind of move through our space and see if this is the design we're happy with. It's pretty cool, uh, it's good fun. I don't know what it is, as I say, but it's okay sometimes just to experiment with modeling tools like this. Okay, so we'll move on um, and add a bit more detail now. What I'm gonna do is add some people and you will have seen my other videos, perhaps I've got some nice little libraries of image props. And the great thing with these is they're very quick and easy to add. Um, they really face the camera, so they're quite highly detailed. And basically when you're in the perspective mode, you basically can see them, they'll face the camera, so they look quite realistic. We'll just move our camera right back to where we started. Let's just double click on that one again. So now you can see the view with our people and you know, adds a whole nother level of realism, I guess, just to the model. So that's really cool, we can have a quick walk through, check out the space, quite busy this tunnel now, <laughs> trying to get through. Um, but it definitely adds a sense of scale and understanding about how the space could work. Okay, so that's a really nice little tip. Um, you can see I've basically just added some light sources now with um, the RenderWorks uh, Heliodon tool, just so I can get some light coming into the model as well. And that's a nice thing to do too. Okay, so I think what we're gonna do now is just show you how we can actually create a few drawings of our rather complex um, initial concept design here. Have a quick spin around as ever, and make sure you're happy with the design. And what we're gonna do is use the clip tool. Okay, so I'm gonna go to the clip cube, select a face of my clip cube, if I want to, I can actually rotate the clip cube round. Um, not sure everybody knows that. And then I can click on a face and basically start to section through my model. Sometimes it jumps around quite a bit. So hold down the key that suppresses the snapping. Um, it's the one on the Mac between Shift and Z, call it the squiggle key. That suppresses the snapping as we move through. And then when ready, we go to right click, create section viewport. Okay, so we're just going to pop this onto a brand new sheet layer, 01, let's just call this uh, sections, click OK, and make sure you uh, up the raster rendering DPI if you're planning to do any kind of OpenGL renderings. They never look very good at 72, that's one of the reasons they look pretty poor quality. So once you get up to two or 300, they look quite good. 
Um, it take a bit longer to render as you can see, but they will look nice once we get there. So it's just processing the section as we speak, and then it will kind of land onto the sheet layer. There we go, looking good. Um, almost fits, but that's quite an interesting little drawing that would be, oh, that'd be so difficult to draw by 2D. Um, remember, anything in 2D that's curving with sort of false perspective, things in front of each other are superbly hard to draw. Okay, so we've moved on a bit with the presentation. Um, we've added a few more viewports, and I was just really going to show you, um, you can even adjust the section line while you're in the annotations layer of the viewport if you would like to. And that makes it very easy so that you can adjust the best place to cut the section um, when you exit the viewport and just click update on the actual section viewport itself. That will correspond with exactly where the new section was taken. Um, so very, very nice to create coordinated drawings directly from the model. As I say, these are hard drawings to draw in traditional 2D design. Um, so the more complex your designs and more curvaceous they are, Things like drawing sections and elevations of, of those kind of designs are ex extremely hard. Whereas if you let the computer do all the hard work and all the calculation of what it looks like, um, that's definitely gonna speed up your design process. So we've got quite a nice little, little presentation now with a couple of elevations, um, a plan and a section. Um, here's a couple of perspective views set from the Renderwitz camera as well, just rendered those out. Good, so I really hope you've enjoyed this video looking at NURBS curves and shelling and creating sort of complex forms. Just going to play out with a little animation just to show you, just in a few minutes, we created a really complex design and had a lot of fun. Thanks for watching, bye bye.